Hey guys, welcome back to the How to Build series where we're going through every single champion in the game, rare and above, and I'm putting together kind of a quick reference build guide for new players, earlier game players, who just need a little guidance with a particular champion and want to know how to gear them up and how to best put them to use. Uh, so I want to say I will not be going into late game strats, late game builds, and masteries all that much. That can get a little convoluted and specific based on how you want to use a particular champion. So again, this is just kind of a quick reference guide to send you in the right direction. I do want to say as a disclaimer too, I'm not saying what I'm, my way is the best way or the only way or that I know better than everybody else. I'm just trying to put the guides out for you guys to reference to give you a little bit of guidance. So with that being said, I'm going to run through this. So get the notepads ready, get ready on the pause and rewind, and let's jump into it with the Avenger of the High Elves faction. She's an attack champ, and she is pretty interesting. I'm actually a little bit familiar with her. I pulled her fairly early in the game, and she's also farmable, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm a little bit familiar with her already, but let's go ahead and talk about her. Base HP, pretty, pretty on par for rare attack champs. Her base attack is pretty nice. She's hovering right around 1,400, and then her Excuse me. Her base speed is 104, which is really nice, actually. That's a, that's a pretty good base speed. So it's going to be pretty easy to scale that up. So pretty nice base stat. She's, she's set up to, to get turns and do some damage right out of the gate. So let's, let's talk about her kit. Attacks one enemy. Has a 30% chance of placing a 30% decreased defense buff for two turns. Now, any time a champion has a first skill defense break, they automatically boost in usability and utility and effectiveness. First skill defense breaks are amazing because it's just a lot more likely that you're gonna keep a defense break on whoever you're fighting. So, so she's automatically gonna do well for you in dungeons. Dungeon boss fights tend to drag on a little bit. She's gonna do a good job of keeping a defense break on the boss. So first skill defense breaks are always nice. And if you, if you uh, skill her up, which she's farmable, so if you're going to use her, you should go farm her and skill her up. There's no reason not to have a skilled up champion if they're farmable. Uh, you can get this up to a 50% chance. So what I've noticed in this game as I've looked at a lot of these champions is that generally when a champion has a first turn defense break, it's a really low percentage. It's like a 15% or, or maybe a 20% chance of landing. I'm not saying there aren't exceptions to that, but what I've seen from the champions that I've pulled I'll, I'll pull someone, there's an epic, I think his name is Cagebreaker, and he, he, his first skill is, is such a low percentage, it seems, to land a defense break, he basically never does it, so he might as well not have it anyway. Uh, in her case, you can get this up to a 50% chance, which means it's got a 50% chance of procking and then rolling your accuracy against the resistance of the enemy. So we, right out of the gate, we know we want accuracy on her because we want her landing that defense break. If, if she's got a first turn defense break, we want to put it to use. That is that is very important right out of the gate. So <clears throat> let's let's move on. Second skill attacks at random two times has an extra fifteen percent chance of inflicting a critical hit. So anytime you've got crit rate built into a skill, that's always a nice bonus because now if you look at her crit rate down here, it's fifteen percent. She's with this skill, she's got an automatic thirty percent chance of landing a critical hit, which is basically a one in three shot, uh, which is not bad. It's, it, that's not bad in itself. Even if you don't put another point of crit rate on her, she's got a 30% chance of critting built in. And she's got nice base attack, so it's going to be good damage, right? So that's, that's always nice. And you can get it down to a two-turn cooldown, which is pretty cool. Third skill, attacks one enemy. This skill is always... This skill always inflicts a critical hit. Now these, kind of, these kinds of skills are so much fun because they allow you to really ramp up your damage because you don't have to worry about critical rate. So being that this skill is, I'm gonna say this skill is really her bread and butter, but, but this one's really nice too. This first turn defense break should not be overlooked. It is, it is very important, very nice to have. Um, this, this enables you to rune ignoring critical rate. So rather than having to go crit rate on the gloves, you can go crit damage. And what's really fun about this too is that generally with an earlier game, I tell people with attack champions to start out focusing on attack and speed. Don't pay attention to crit rate, crit damage because it gets much harder to rune for that. You're, you're basically doubling the stats you have to focus on, and, or I'm sorry, artifact, I keep saying rune. 
you're, you're, you're doubling the amount of stats you have to focus on, and you just don't have access to the artifacts like that to make it happen. So you're really going to end up just spreading yourself way too thin and being effective in no way rather than if you just focused on the attack, you're going to do damage, and then as you get your hands on more artifacts, you're going to be able to start to incorporate crit rate and crit damage into the build. In her case, you can just right out of the gate go crit damage on the gloves because she doesn't need crit rate, right? This gives her a boost, so this will crit one in three times already. We don't really care if this one lands a critical hit because all we really want her to do here is land a defense break. So this is really where she's getting her damage from, and it's always going to crit. So, for the artifact sets, very early in the game, just throw some attack. Go like double attack speed, two attack sets and a speed set, and go crit damage on the gloves, attack percentage on the armor, and speed on the boots. And that's going to that's gonna shoot her speed up so that she can turn cycle. It's going to shoot her crit damage up so that when you hit someone with this skill, it's already, already a substantial amount of damage. And then you're getting the attack percentage from the armor. So... Those are, those are going to be the stats you really want to focus on for her. Now, something else to keep in mind, you're going, you're going to get those stats from the main stats on those. Now, you do want accuracy. You, you want her landing that defense break, especially with having such a good chance uh, as, as in comparison to other champions I've, I've looked at. She's got one of the better chances to land a first skill defense break that I've seen in the game so far. Now, you could throw an accuracy set on her. You could go attack set, accuracy set, and, spe and speed set. You could go double attack accuracy if you don't uh, want to go a speed set, but you are going to want to shoot that accuracy up a little bit. So, as I said, crit damage on the gloves, attack percentage on the armor, speed on the boots. Any combination of attack set, speed set, accuracy set that you have that can get those stats up, great. As you get a little later into the game and you start to get your hands on some crit damage sets, you could start to incorporate those in because what we want to do with her is shoot her attack and her crit damage way, 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 way up so that she's really just bursting damage every time she gets this skill. That's what we want. And we also want her having defense break because if she puts a defense break on somebody and then does this skill, one shot. She's, she's going to be able to take some really high HP targets out with that kind of setup. So uh, th th those are what I would focus on. Her, her key stats are going to be attack percentage, crit damage, accuracy, and speed. And if, if you want them in order of priority, I'd probably say attack percentage, accuracy, crit damage, and speed. Because again, you don't want to put, you don't want this to go to waste. You want her landing that every time she does the skill. You want to keep a defense break on whoever you're fighting. So she, she's fun. She's a cool little champ. I, I think Pulling Cage Breaker triggered something in my brain where I, I kind of forgot about her, but I'm gonna I'm gonna put her back to use. I think in some of the in some of the dungeons where defense break is is crucial. As far as where she's gonna be useful, I think that's about it. Maybe early game clan boss. She's gonna be able to land a nice bit of burst damage. She's gonna put a defense break up for the rest of your team to put to use, and she's going to really put in some heavy hitting single target burst damage with this skill. So you could use her in early game clan boss on an early game clan boss team. And maybe even as you as you're starting to creep your way into mid game, depending on what other champions you pulled. But she's not a bad option for that. Uh, she could be a good single target nuker in arena offense if you wanted to go that route. She would be nice in campaign, particularly boss stages where there's those targets with the high HP that she can go in and burst down for you and put up the defense break. To help you nuke them down and then I'd say most of the dungeons honestly because even though she's not multi-hitting she is putting the defense up on this uh, the defense break on the spider and then she can come in with this really hard single target burst damage so that's going to help your team run through the runs quicker uh, maybe not fire knight because she's not really multi-hitting that much but I'd say every other dungeon she's viable you may even be able to sneak through an ice golem and, and burst down enough of his health to kind of skip over some of the procs where you get his health to a certain point and he, he does his skill and summons his minions, you might be able to burst him down through one or two of those so that you don't have to deal with it as many times, you know what I mean? So she's got a lot of utility, she's pretty cool, and seems like a lot of fun to use and relatively easy to build because you don't have to worry about crit rate. So uh, fun, I'd say my rating for her as far as usefulness and, and, and where you're going to be using her, I'd put her at, a, at, a, at like a solid... 
seven and a half, seven, just because of the specific, no, 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 I'll take that back, actually. We're gonna go like seven and a half to eight on her. First skill defense break, as I said, cannot be overlooked. That is that is really crucial, and it's just gonna it's gonna be so helpful in the in the dungeons and on the boss stages of the campaign. That having that first skill defense break basically means it's gonna stay up. She, if you put the accuracy on her, she's gonna land it, especially with a fifty percent chance of it proccing. So, um, it's it's gonna stay up. That's gonna be helpful, and just the amount of damage that you're gonna be able to to put on somebody with this skill is gonna be really really nice. So uh, yeah, I'd say closer to like seven and a half, eight for the for the things you're going to be using her for. That's that's probably where I would rank her out of ten. So uh, fun little champ, actually. So yeah, farm her up, skill her up, put her to use. Uh, I think that's going to wrap it up. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. If you have any comments, if you're using her and you think she's better than I said or worse than I said, or if you're using her for some things maybe I didn't touch on in here, uh, we just want all the information that we can get. So feel free to to, to get that discussion going in the comments. And uh, I hope this was helpful. I appreciate you watching. If you want to catch me live on Twitch, I stream every weekday at 6 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash jgigs. Other than that, again, I hope it helped. Appreciate you watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.